In this video, I am going to tell you about the histological structure of human vaginal tissue and how to examine these vaginal cells for the for application in forensic science. A normal human vagina is covered with a squamous mucosa. So the uppermost layer is the squamous mucosa which lines the human vagina which is composed of stratified squamous epithelial tissue. So here the epithelial uh, cells are there in the uppermost part then the line under the squamous mucosa is the submucosa layer that is this layer just below this is the submucosa layer which is con which contains an abundance of connective tissue and capillaries. So below the submucosa is muscularis which is made up of smooth muscles. So here you can see that the uppermost part is mucosa, then beneath this is the submucosa layer and then below that layer is the muscularis which is made up of the muscles. So now if you go with the further detailing of this the squamous mucosa that is the uppermost layer of the vagina, it is further divided into many layers that is four layers are basically. So the lowermost layer of this uh, squamous mucosa is called as basal layer. So this basal layer is anchored to the basement membrane that separates the squamous mucosa from the submucosa. So here you can see that uh, the basal layer is the layer that is going to differentiate the submucosa from the squamous mucosa. Okay, so as the cell, and if you go with the property of this basal layer, so this uh, basal layer here you can see this basal layer are uh, composed of the cells that are smaller in size with relatively large nuclei and are highly proliferative. Proliferative means they have a tendency to divide very um, easily. Okay, as the cell migrates up from the basal layer, that is just the layer above the basal layer. This layer is called as parabasal layer. So the hair cell undergo differentiation. Okay, so um, the I forgot to tell you that the uh, basal layer are the layer that have the cell of very small size but their nuclei is very large. So once it migrates to the upper layer, that layer is the parabasal layer where the cell undergo differentiation and then as it migrates more uh, towards the upper side, this layer is called as intermediate layer and the cells are, here the cells become flattened in structure and their nuclei are now compressed. So once they approach to further uh, upper part so what happened at that part so now these cells are called as epithelial cell or in these epithelial cells are uh, forming a layer which is called as superficial layer so it reaches the this layer is also called as the apical layer so the cells are fully differentiated in this layer and with small and dense nuclei here the nuclei become as dense and the uh, smaller one so what happened in this layer, this layer cells are actually very loose, uh, loosened up and they used to shed off from this layer to the uh, surface of the vagina. So even um, at the time of collection of the vaginal samples, the layer which came uh, in the swab of the vagina is this superficial uh, layer only. So uh, at times there are chances to get the parabasal layer cells as well but they are usually very low. The main uh, amount, the major amount of the sample that has been collected in a, uh, in a swab of the vaginal is generally composed of the superficial layer. And moreover as they are loose, loosen up so uh, the, some of the cells are already present in the vaginal uh, fluid. So the layer that lines this superficial layer is a mucus and this mucus is released from the um, glands which are present in within the deep in the epithelium layer itself. So if you go with the properties of this uh, vaginal epithelial cells, so there are certain properties like they do not accumulate keratin which is generally happens in the skin cells. So they are differentiated from the skin cell based upon the presence of keratin. Second difference is 
the glycogen is present in the cytoplasm this glycogen is present in more uh, um, means uh, they are present in abundance amount as compared to the other cells although these cells uh, the, the glycogen is present in other cells like the lining of oral cavity pharynx esophagus anus and the apex of ure urethra but the major amount is generally the abundance amount is generally present in the uh, cytoplasm of the vaginal epithelial cells as i already told you that the vaginal squamous mucosa that is the uppermost part of the vagina uh, vaginal layer is covered by the mucus that is secreted from the glands uh, that are located deep inside the epithelium next thing i have also uh, told you that the apical layer are eventually sloughed and continuously replaced by the cells of the deeper layer so what happened here that these are the four layers but the lowermost layer keeps on migrating to the upper part and thus it forms the new layer used to generate from the lower and it keeps on going to the upper part so as it uh, reaches to the topmost part of the vaginal layer so it sloughs down uh, it sloughs the cells shed off and it keeps on moving like this okay so the next last part is once you are going to take the vaginal swab so the obvious layer that is going to be present in the vaginal swab is the superficial layer that is the topmost layer which is your this layer uh, the superficial layer okay so the next thing is how to differentiate these vaginal cells from the other cells so first main thing as i told you that the vaginal cells is uh, having an abundance amount of the glycogen so just by staining the glycogen material uh, staining the cells that's uh, in such a way that it is going to stain the glycogen part so we would be able to differentiate that whether is it the source of the given fluid is the vaginal fluid or some thing else based on the intensity of the staining so first of all you should be acknowledge with that what this glycogen is okay so first of all uh, as you all already familiar with the term glucose okay so this uh, glucose is a unit it, it act as a monomer and this monomer is stored within the animal and plant in the form in different forms okay so it used to store within the animal in the form of glycogen that is it's a polymer whereas in the plant it used to store as a starch now starch is again the is made up of the combination of amylose and amylopectin around 80% of amylopectin is there in a starch or around 20% of amylose is present in a starch whereas the animal's polysaccharide uh, polymer of the glucose is the glycogen okay so but if you compare with the morphology of this as uh, one thing that came in your mind if they are the polymer of the same units and so how they are different to each other so they are differentiated based upon the bonding that they uh, take place within the uh, monomer so if you go with the structure of a glucose this is the structure of a glucose okay so it has the four carbons so if you go with its structure here you can see this is the first second third fourth fifth and sixth carbon so what happened in amylose which is a part of the starch in amylose alpha 1 this one carbon and fourth carbon is linked in a linear structure so if it's a linear structure then it is called as amylose but if along with this linear structure if there is a branching of the alpha 1 6 linkage that is first carbon and this is the sixth carbon so if this linkage would be there then it could be either the um, amylopectin or the glycogen so how glycogen is different from the amylopectin is here the branching in the case of glycogen used to take after every 10th glucose whereas in amylopectin the branching used to take place after every 25th glucose so the interval varies among the uh, glyc among the glycogen and amylopectin so the more branching is in the case of glycogen and less branching is in the case of amylopectin